directly directly can i talk yes. am i audible now yes sir i can okay very clear sir yes theek hai na okay so thank you very much so today uh, as i was saying like my topic is going to be on the journey of technology transfer from basic research to uh, product development it's a type of case study in fact you know like uh, before planning about this title i was i was wondering how i'm going to address the platform which is you know 100% you know management people sitting you know it's a different platform for me actually it's not that simple okay but i said i i thought like no see if you are a good technologist or a good scientist i think uh, what is happening is when you are doing some fundamental research it's not reaching the market for various reasons so but this time you know because of my background corporate experience i took this challenge as an opportunity and i ventured on some very interesting case study and uh, the timing for this given to me is about 2 hours i am normally known to talk with one slide for 2 hours i have about 24 slides so i think i would suggest maybe sumati madam to you know monitor my timing also okay so yes so thanks to nilesh and his technology management team for giving me a great platform so the contents of my talk will be on the phases of product development then concept development technological gap identification evolution of research methodology means how we got evolved you know that's that's very very important we have put some nice case study in that simple one so that you know you have a better understanding then we covered something about project outcomes then what are the challenges of such projects and how can we create value as i was saying when you have challenges you should definitely think of opportunity now this is what i was trained before in corporate so how do we create value then what are the steps which were sincerely adhered for transferring this technology and these are not the strict steps which you don't you do you, you need to follow you know there are there are some changes there could be some changes during the evolution of the methodology but what i had gone through that's what i'm going to explain then the drawbacks of the technology transfer then finally i will go into conclusion again all the my my slides are about 25 slides it will be very artistic thanks to the open platform like google where i have picked up some pictures but i have referred them so there is no copyright infringement which is very very important so all these are referred so if you look into the phases for product development phase one as you could see it's a concept the concept need not be a rocket science it's very simple like kids are the innovators they are the best innovators you know like uh, uh, if you take the case study of anything like you know tea bags what we use now or maybe the napkins for the kids everything had come from not scientists right? it's all like the day to day people you know routine people who had worked and they thought why not i do like this why not i do like this you know it's a concept development for that you don't need to have a degree the second one is applied research how do i how do i take that concept and apply in the form of a research during that process you will have some team or committee or evaluation people who will try to ask for some questions like hey have you done the feasibility study what are the feasible no that's that's if, if you see most of the most of the universities in india okay both private and uh, the public universities in india they have fantastic concepts from the concept yes they do very well and take the concept to the applied research where they take this platform to come out with some useful outputs and they publish in the form of papers with a very high impact factor so that they can have a good citation but beyond that what is happening is like the pre development the next stage phase 3 the pre development where whatever you have developed in the applied research you will have to verify 
what it could be anything like if it's a design you design the verify the design so it's a pre development so most of the universities you know like reputed ones they are coming towards pre development but beyond that the link is missing especially because see i was in uk for 12 years and with my previous company we used to work on consortium consortium means group of companies i never believe that okay you know uh, i think you see like uh, four or five it's a, it's a teamwork universities institutes companies end users they all will be the partners we have the partnering partnering agreements done we used to have the ndas done then we sit together for a project with a defined goal objective is very very clear these days objectives are not clear at least in academic institutes we don't have a clear mandate we want to be having innovation with respect to the research but there is no clear mandate in the objective that yes i want to have such a product so you know that kind of value addition is very much required when a consortium sits together where the swot analysis is nicely done okay then but this is not like especially in asian countries the development pre production sitting in a consortium sitting with the end users sitting with the industrial people debating the pros and cons of the develop processes products you know you you have lots and ifs and buts so you know it doesn't it doesn't take off very nicely in the development and the final one is the manufacturing and commercialization so these phases uh, for product developments was picked by my group again i am saying i am giving the talk and definitely it's my team my team is made up of myself and about five phd students and two research associates so this is my team we started in 2012 and please don't expect i'm going to give you a rocket technology very simple straightforward technology where we applied some cs common sense and we tried to pick up some ideas from the existing technologies and we gave out some nice productionization so concept development the first phase my case study my case study this happened in the year 2013 the objective was very clear very very clear anti bacterial and super hydrophobic fabric material for tri services it could be anything you know it will be like uh, the real uniform suits or maybe for the maintenance engineers or for the people who are doing you know laborious jobs in the workshops so they always wanted this and this particular objective was not defined by very honest it was not defined by the tri services of india it was defined by the tri services of naval post graduate school nps california it was in 2013 so we submitted a nice proposal where they wanted a white paper and this white paper had you know like we signed nda before giving this naval post graduate school the proposal the proposal was really supported by office of naval research global o n r global again in california montreal so we submitted the proposal they liked the proposal and they invited us to defend to be very honest they paid for our travel our accommodation so myself and our previous honorable vice chancellor dr halada we both had visited california we presented this it was a half a day session elaborate discussions on various technology and it was not that simple okay so <laughs> it's defending international people and also some renowned scientists and nps naval post graduate school is not in top us universities but they do lot of a uh, lot of uh, research is defined by the tri services only in that university so the objectives of whatever research they do are very clear so might be you know the audience might be thinking oh these fabrics are not available yes all these fabrics are available but there are some drawbacks which i will you know cover in my next slides but if you look into the objective the objective is very broad it's a broader picture anti bacterial and super hydrophobic anti bacterial as the term says it should not give rise to any bacterial progress 
in the fabric material. Like for example, someone working in submarine for seven days, he might not change the garments. So they want the fabric to have smart characteristics that it's able to release the antibacterial material so that he doesn't cause, it doesn't have any infections. That was one of the mandate. And the second mandate was super hydrophobic, means lotus leaf, as you could see in those pictures. Lotus leaf properties means self-cleaning characteristics. So why do we need this? Because it increases the garment freshness, body odors. We have millions of bacteria, useful and non-useful. So we don't want to, you know, have those bacteria with us in our body, which causes some post infections. And also, like anti-dust mite technology means with the super hydrophobic property, I don't, I don't want any, any particles to adhere on the substrate so that it causes some drawbacks or infections with reaction to the sweat. So these were the mandates. So, so as you could see the previous slide, the objectives are clear. Simple objectives, but very clear. Then, existing technology. I think most of them, you know, the audience would have understood like, hey, these technologies are available. Why are you doing this? What is the difference? Yes. If you look into the existing technology, the existing technology, they have the antibacterial fabrics. Yes. I think, uh, think Tri Services, you know, I have an officer sitting just opposite to me in my hall. He, he knows, yes, antibacterial fabrics are there. And they are all synthetic. Let me tell you, they are all synthetic, chemically modified. Chemically modified. They are titanium dioxide. They are zinc oxide. They are all synthetic systems. And super hydrophobic fabric. Simple. Teflon. Tava. Okay. The pan. What we use for, you know, dosa. Anti-stick pan. It has got super hydrophobic characteristics. So, you know, you will be wondering, hey, so this technology is already available. Why are we going to reinvent the wheel? No. We will cover it later. So, what I'm trying to say in this slide is, objective looks very simple, but with existing technology is going to be a big challenge for me. Very big challenge. Come on, how? And the company who supply these, they are not Indian companies. They are multinational companies. DuPont. DuPont is the company who provides super hydrophobic materials. Antibacterial fab fabrics are given. The, the additives are given by a company called Arkema. Arkema is a French company. And there is one company in Switzerland called Siva Gaigi. These guys are the masters in giving antibacterial additives for fabrics. Now, during the process of this uh, concert development, what methodology? See, I will have to defend the world. When I defended this NPS team in California, I did a very thorough state of the art search. State of the art search doesn't mean that you take it from Google or Wikipedia. Whatever is available free in the internet, please don't believe. You'll have to pay for some technologies. You'll have to pay for some state of the art search. And I was very lucky to be in DIIT because DIIT spends about two crores worth of budget for annually for our, for our library. So we have the best library facility. With that facility, we were able to identify the existing state of the art search. What is available? You know, we tabulated very nicely about 16 page document, uh, which I'm not going to share with you because that will be too technical for this platform. So what I'm trying to say and in this slide is the methodology, the approach was very clear. We did state of the art search for the opportunity for the objective which we have planned. Again, for this you need money, you need to have budget, you need to have a time frame. So this time frame and budget, bless us, uh, we are part of DRDO. So we defended the similar type of uh, project proposal to our headquarters. And we were very lucky to get the budget from ER and IPR of DRDO. I thank them for the budget. And also the time frame given was about three years. 
again still we are in the concept development only yeah so from all the state of the art search from the project objective we came to a nice summary where we claim that synthetic antimicrobial are either silver ion based or titanium dioxide based systems whatever is available in the market whatever is procured by the tri services in india for antibacterial fabric materials they are all having silver ions and titanium dioxide based systems to get this information service officers will appreciate me it's not that easy but i fished the right tank and i got it existing process are yarn making you know this is known yarn making is known adding is known means water fabric material you have you just do a coating on the substrate and then you you know you stitch it for your requirement okay that is available fabric manufacturing so these you know if you look into the first part is with respect to the materials innovation the second part is with respect to the manufacturing how am i going to compete with the yarn makers how am i going to compete with the padding people not easy it's a challenge but yes the existing processes are these are the processes which we have consolidated and summarized the third one synthetic materials for lotus leaf properties are fluoro based whatever is there in your in your tawa the frying pan for the dosa they are all teflon based the tawa's real cost is only let me be very honest is only about 100 rupees but the extra whatever you buy is for the teflon and the thickness of the teflon is in sub microns so now you understand the cost of the product also the final one is defined specification yes we got the specification defined we got a control paper okay this is what i'll have to work out with which i'm not sharing because that's going to be again very technical but yes we got a beautiful specification done let me tell you it's not easy to define a specification of a product within you know one year no no it's not that simple but with the existing state of the art search and with support from drdo and services i was able to define a very nice specification so from this specification definition the next to process is gap identification very interesting for gap identification you will have to think really like kids you will have to be highly innovative you cannot say i am a professor i am going to think about the gap nothing doing at least in materials and chemical engineering it has not worked so we said okay how do we identify from all these literature from the literature we realized herbal based antibacterial fabric material why not we think of herbal based antibacterial fabric material it's really you know it's a different thing now i think last month or so i think banuzan or peter england they have released a shirt with tulsi extract it has come in the market also okay but i'm talking about 2012 and huh? 2012 we had that dream herbal based antibacterial material instead of silver ion or titanium dioxide what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to replace that synthetic material to herbal based because india is wealthy with respect to herbal extracts so we thought in that way the second one the gap identification innovation what innovation am i going to bring in processing that fabric material it's not that easy it's not that simple because it requires you know process optimization but anyhow uh, i have that uh, background experience of technology transfer so i was able to venture upon with one czech republic uh, university called the technical university of libere this company was the first company which makes the machine called el marco that's the name of the company they make nano fibers that can be stitched into a fabric material very innovative very innovative technology so i was able to venture upon with uh, this professor and this professor was very happy and he said okay we will be a partner with you and thank god we got a going sign through devil devil is not the labs of drdo so proper channel so we were not just jugging with someone everything on paper was clear we had the mou done and we were transferring we are discussing for the manufacturing support so as you could see 
SWOT analysis was done. What are the drawbacks? I always don't care. The success stories I never want. I want all the bad stories of anything. So while doing this, while discussing with this technical university of Italy, various drawbacks were discussed rather than what are the strength of the processes, opportunities. You know, human nature is to give all the best things. If I introduce myself, like for example, Nilesh Ware, he introduced me all the best part in my life, but he didn't introduce the bad things of my life. So that's very important to identify that that is a correction factor. Anyhow, so I cannot, you know, do that in my introduction. But I was very much interested, what were the weaknesses of my technology? What, you know, the thought process, what were the weaknesses? That was beautifully supported by this Technical University of Liberec. And I used to, uh, you know, put on this recording also. I got good support from an Australian university called Deccan University of Australia, where I had a professor who is like, uh, I would say, the father of fabric technology in the world. Okay. He is uh, the director of Institute of Frontier Materials, Deccan University of Australia. Uh, we signed again MOU with him. Fatafat, we exchanged our paper. The white paper was exchanged. Immediately, he came forward to support. Ultimately, out of this uh, slide, finally, you know, ideas were there. We had a lot of ideas. And the origin of the ideas, to be very honest, was, was with me only using herbal extracts. That was my idea. But the team was there. We had the team. So always, you know, I, I had come from this corporate background. Even, even if I sneeze like a cat, I, I say that, no, we should file a patent. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm sneezing like a cat. It's a, it's a different thing. So something which comes different, I'm trained. The slide has gone. Full screen. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what we said... No, we should file a patent. It's an idea patent. Boss, believe me, only two pages with the support of ERIPR. I'm telling this platform, we were very blessed. We got the initial patent provisionally filed in the year 2012. So we consolidated. The visit to NPS was very fruitful in getting their feedback. But ultimately, the collaboration never happened with Naval Postgraduate School. It happened with Deccan University and Technical University of Liberec. So during the process of concept development and gap identification only, we got the best people working in the technologies across the world who can support our product. Now, we filed the patent. After filing the patent, now we appointed students. We got the budget. We recruited the students. So I had about four students. I had the privilege of recruiting four JRF students, two PhDs for working on the research. So during the process of feasibility study, materials and processes very easily available. You see, materials were available. Basically, our geographically, we are in Girinagar. In Girinagar, it's a very fertile, fertile place. And uh, with respect to the local market, my local market requirement was only herbal extracts. So most of my herbal extracts were taken from Navi Mumbai and also from Karnataka, Hubli. Fantastic, uh, real clean products. Uh, these guys were very happy and uh, we signed the TOT, NDA, everything with them because they should not, you know, take my ideas and share with the other vendors. So, you know, we had done all those paperwork. Hey, it's paperwork doesn't mean it's very hard. It's only one or two pages document. That's all. Please, you know, those copies are with us and we are very happy to share that. So materials and processes were available in the local market. Then during the feasibility study with our ideas, we came out with lots of data and all these data were communicated in the form of publications to very reputed journals and publishers like Royal Society, American Society, Wiley, Germany, Elsevier, Netherlands, so that are we on the right track with respect to applied research. Because this is the platform. Every paper, you know, like uh, the audience, you might be publishing some papers. Normally, you will have one or two reviewers, critical reviewers. It's very good to get ridiculed. Again, I'm saying, no, I work only on the weakness. I didn't work on the strength. So with these papers, we were ridiculed by people. Hey, it has got these flaws, drawbacks, blah, blah, blah. 
we made lots and lots of corrections and then we were able to publish in very peer reviewed journals the four jrf students who had with whom were with me three students finished his phd and they are settled abroad now in good universities as assistant professors one in japan one in australia and the third one in belgium so they got fantastic jobs so now applied research should be taken somewhere and in my initial slide i said we wanted to work in the consortium way group partnering way so we want to scale up so during the process of the research only i had identified good companies and some research institutes they were identified when you scale up from a tabletop experimentation to a prototype level my goodness you never hit those are the days where you always re repeat 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 yeah there are lots of statistical models they say the gucci model can help you again i am telling you i think it's recorded so i cannot uh, be very harsh with that models but still ultimately practically it should work in a very feasible way so the optimization process from applied research to the next scale was not that easy in my case i had lots and lots of challenges but we overcome that and with respect to the process optimization it was very easy we had collaborated with one, one company called alok industries in silvasa and they were the suppliers for most of the tri services fabric materials section so they were very very supportive we signed the dot and da uh, for fiber production yarn production mechanical finishing chemical finishing for drying dyeing all their facilities were used for the nicest word i like in my research is free everything was free so that was like a, a bonus for us so in the phase 2 after the phase 2 i am summarizing that part of my product development technical feasibility operational feasibility scheduled time frame feasibility and economical feasibility all were successfully done when i say successfully the partners were happy that's all successfully doesn't mean oh sir what is the cost of this no 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 i'm not going to tell you that today but my partner who is going to sell this alok industries and atira they are happy with the product so you know it was successful we signed a mou and nda and this signature helped us to you know, do some fantastic uh, partnering develop my partnering skills but why 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 we did this partnering you see you know as you could see in the nice uh, cartoon i picked up so if you see you are having the cost which is shared in my case it was free as a researcher for a good teacher if everything comes free for his technical activities he he will forget his food and you know family i'm telling you very honest okay so i was very happy then risk factor wow that's a great terminology risk we had lots of risks processing risks so when i was feeling sad about my process my alok industries used to come and say no 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 sir why not we do optimization change the speed change the thickness change the yarn diameter i have some spindles which can do a special support you know so we are spreading the risk of depression it is the risk of spreading the risk of according to me eh? it's according to me risk of depression okay then access to the partner skills yes my partners i used to work on ground level with the partners especially alok industries and atira ahmedabad textile research, textile research institute atira me production department me all were diploma in textile technology from up bihar and blah 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 various geographies wow it was a fantastic learning curve for me i stayed there for 6 months to understand first their language and i am from chennai proper chennai so what language they used to speak i i couldn't understand then later i became a part and parcel of them they liked me you know they they, they were very friendly they and they had lots and lots of hidden talents with respect to the processes which to be very honest the engineers were not having the managers were not having so i was very successful there so that was like a blessing in disguise for me again because of my my corporate background or maybe something so from phase 1 and phase 2 for a good teacher it's a good success story so we had a good evolution of the methodology the objective was well defined 
technology gaps were nicely identified intellectual properties were protected the provisional patent number had been approved and consortium management was defined nicely in whatever mous and ndas we had signed the feasibility studies were successfully carried out through joint collaboration and as a teacher the best part was my six students who had been working with me they are placed very nicely across the globe as a teacher which i have not included in this but as a teacher i am saying that part now the project is over so ultimately we came out with nice outcomes right the outcomes are cotton based cotton based anti bacterial fabric material was developed the innovative fabric manufacturing techniques of electro spinning kuch nahi hai the terminology don't get scared of this electro spinning and all nanotechnology and all is very simple it's all in nature see the cow web which you see on the roofs of any buildings they are all nano fibers they have very high aspect ratio engineers aspect ratio matlab l by d ratio is very very high any fiber having l by d ratio is very high they have all the positive characteristics mechanical properties are very high tenacities are very high percentage elongation is very good so but it's a technique the machines can have the needles from the needles again this cotton candy jo park ke bahar jo pink color mein hai and so that that's the machine actually that's the machine so there is no big uh, technology but we made fibers from that technology with some herbal extracts for antibacterial performances then the final fabric material had super hydrophobic property self cleaning property in fact i wanted to show a video for this covid reason i missed that video so excuse me for that but it's a good fabric material and uh, we were able to develop that super hydrophobic and cleaning property of the fabric material two patents granted three book chapters published then journal articles published three students graduated with phd and mou signed with three indian industries three international universities australia israel and canada so these were the you know mou doesn't mean we sign you sign i sign we have a nice lunch nice drink thank you very much no 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 we extended the technology to the next level so that's what i'm talking about mous then i was blessed with the funding of uh, eripr of drdo i have the best state of the art laboratory for a good teacher his lab is the best place first home so he got his laboratory nicely done for fabricating technical textiles so this is the project outcome of the applied research concept development to applied research okay questions shall we ask for them later or shall i come back maybe we'll have the questions after my presentation now so if you look into the time frame uh, we had done you know from 2012 to 2015 we had got all the outputs ready filed patents so phase 3 has come nicely and documented okay now immediately challenge has come out like the global level challenges covid so if you look into that uh, covid uh, challenge very interesting there is a huge demand for the personal protection kit personal protection kit i am not deviating there is a nice continuation of the story please please don't feel that i am deviating somewhere personal protection kit when i say personal protection kit as you could see in the cartoon it has shown everything it's shown everything except the face everything is there and face except eyes maybe nose is covered but everything except eyes even eyes are also covered if you see everything is covered so it's like you know shield it's a shield protection personal protection kit in my eyes for my eyes it's a shield the government had put restriction so during this time what had happened covid time pp kits were developed in india across gali gali mein people had developed the mask kuch bhi banate hain ultimately you know anything anything even even a tailor had a good business because he was making masks okay but what happened the government felt that there is a you know huge requirement of p 
PPE kits for India so that all the exports you know, were banned. They put restrictions on PPE kits, especially masks, gloves, all these things. So, you know, all these things are to prevent the shortage of these items in the country. That's what they, they want. They want everyone to have these things. They want all these personal PPE things to reach the entire 1.3 billion population. And I was in the lockdown actually. It was during the month of March. I am the hostel management committee chairman. I locked the hostel on the 18th of March 2020. And me, my faculty members of technology management were having a nice family time during the lockdown. So we were sitting at home and doing babysittings. I have two kids. So we were doing all those things, cooking. We developed our hobbies. But when you sit, as I said, no teachers, innovators, innovators, innovators need not be scientists. Again and again, I'm emphasizing I'm PhD, but yeah, I carry that value. But again, for innovation, you don't need to be a PhD. You know, you, you, you play with them, you do cooking, but still something at the back of your mind, you always think, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So that opportunity, this challenge, oh, I, I thought maybe I should take it as an opportunity again. So I created values, whatever fabric material I had developed, which had got all the international level validations. I'm repeating the statement. Whatever fabric materials we have developed, it has got all the international level validations. American Society of Testing of Materials standardization is not that easy. All these were done for my fabric material. And for our fabric material, we had enough samples to play around and mess around. And uh, we thought, why not we create some values for our product, which was just lying in my lab. So my, if you look into that project, that project we had claimed antimicrobial property. Let me tell you again, I'm not giving the technical details. Our fabric material, which was developed, had the antimicrobial property for about 14 different microbes, 14 different microbes. It's a very good day-to-day -day life microbes. And the most sweetest part of my fabric is biodegradability. Biodegradability, I'm emphasizing, I'm going to repeat this three times. Biodegradability, biodegradability, biodegradability. Matlab, it can be eaten by cow dung. It can be eaten by sand. It can be eaten by local bacteria. It can be put in the garbage bag where it can be completely assimil you know, assimilated by your bacteria. Bacterias. So it's a fantastic food for the colonies of nice bacteria. Biodegradable property. And then we thought, hey, ours is a cotton-based fabric material. How can we think? You know, ours is like, like, a, like a fabric material. But the creation of value is there because we got a technology and that technology has got some nanofibers. Nanofibers are having 10 power minus 9 meters and our virus is falling in that category only. I'll repeat again. 10 power minus 9 meters, 1 nanometer. My nanofiber is falling in the dimension of our lovely coronavirus. Yes, I think you all are guessing correct. Super hydrophobic property is a value addition. So if you look into the picture below, we had the molecular compatibility done. We had the porosity of the fiber. You see the porous, they are all in nanometers. Huh? It is done by the advanced characterization tool called the scanning electron microscopy. Field emission was applied and we got the porosity ranging in 1 nanometer to 18 nanometers. That's the pore size there where you were able to see. We are able to see the antibacterial property. We are able to see the water repellency property. Then we said, hey, why not we use this fabric material for making a three ply sample? So with whatever sample we had, we made three ply samples. And we, I think in that we are able to see the three ply samples. And the three ply samples were exposed to cow dung. The three ply, I'm sorry. Three fly sample was exposed to cow dung, which you see that it is degraded. It's a biodegraded sample. So the three ply fabric material was getting degraded in four weeks with 60% weight loss. Now you all imagine, I think you all might be sitting with a mask or maybe not with a mask. The mask is not 
cotton based they are all synthetic based they are all synthetic based they are all polypropylene woven mats it's again garbage it's again plastic pollution it's again marine pollution so corona has enhanced the pollution with the help of our ppv kits ppe kits which are existing so we thought hey we are creating a value why not a do some validation see for the previous fabric material some american standards are to be followed but now i'm developing that in the form of a three ply mask so i'm i'm into a challenge now i'll have to do a different testings it's okay you know you know we are at lockdown and uh, yeah our lockdown was only for a period of one month then we all were enjoying thank god we came to offices and we were able to work in the work in the lab so we came to the lab and we said hey we'll have to do some do some optimization for this particular application yes so we we came in the media immediately you know we we got some good good outputs we did some we did some value addition after the value creation you know like uh, by saying that your n95 mask can be replaced by cotton based breathable porous virus neutralizing antibacterial mask obviously you know there will be a big news the news like uh, our 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 vice chancellor was very happy that you know we should take this to the next level uh, this should not stop at applied research we had done some good validation so we did the breathability test we did the porosity test we did the bacterial filtering efficacy test particulate filtering efficacy test virus neutralizer test again now you all will be surprised from march we thought about this how you can manage all these things by the month of april now we'll have to apply it i'm sorry for this word called jugad which it works with your previous connections with all the companies who are fabric manufacturers my god i was really blessed really blessed and they did all the testing for us and we got the test the virus neutralization was the only test which we had done with the nuclear magnetic resonance at our place but other tests were all carried out my friends and you know well wishers spread across and the product was launched but before launching what we did is we advertised so the local newspapers had covered that you know dit had come with some virus neutralizing face marks with some ayurveda products and we were so lucky you know the the herbal extracts water we used i repeat the herbal extracts whatever we used by grace of god were there in the list of ministry of ayush whatever herbal extracts we used were in the list of ministry of ayush bless us so we immediately you know we advertised that you know as per the ministry of ayush protocols we had developed a fabric material having herbal extracts of such nano fibers which can have a virus neutralizing property this was for the media now finally the the properties see phase 4 i'm coming into now from applied research i have come out to a different phase now i'm doing the product specifications my product has got anti microbial property biodegradable biodegradable property it's a cotton based material it has got a nano fiber which has got the herbal extracts in one of the plies it has got super hydrophobic property lotus leaf property is for self cleaning be developed but now if i sneeze on the face of neelashware with this mask my splash will have a super hydrophobic property you know that's a self cleaning property that is an added value for this particular technology it has got a good porosity i tell you i travel one and a half hours from my office to the work uh, to home i'm wearing this continuously and i am not having any issues with respect to breathing i'm able to be very normally breathing no problem the condensation problem is there on the glasses so for that reason we'll have to take it towards the nose and my frame should come on that fabric material that's all very simple common sense and there is no condensation but still it's a fantastic porosity good breathability factorial efficacy properties virus neutralizing what do you mean by virus neutralizing the virus neutralizing is whatever proteins yeah. is present on the surface of the virus when it reacts with the herbal extract of our system it neutralizes those amino acids 
वायरस का शेल वायरस के शेल को एक बार इफ वी न्यूट्रलाइज दो शेल द वायरस लूजेस इट्स कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सो दैट इज द इंपॉर्टेंट सेलिंग पॉइंट ऑफ दिस एंड इट्स एन इम्यूनिटी बूस्टिंग फैब्रिक्स इन फैक्ट वी डिड सम माय माय वाइस चांसलर वाज वेरी 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 सपोर्टिव दिस आर बाला विला टू बाय फ्रॉम द मैन्युफैक्चरर सम मास्क्स एंड गिव इट टू द लोकल हेल्थ वर्कर्स so i had distributed to the local health workers from kadakwasla lake till patraj road uh, and police policemen they were very happy actually you know they felt very nice that it has got that flavor of the eucalyptus the flavor of ajwain no no it's it's like it's awesome you know that's the word i can use not because it's my product or our product but yes it it makes a difference compared to the n95 so these were the designs if you see on the right hand side the designs were all made by me and my students we did all those designs the thought process you know again it's our thought process we own it so now ultimately when you are saying that bala sir is your product it's a dit product the next stage of the process development we registered dit develops ayurveda herbal based face mask pavitrapati pavitra pati in sanskrit means lord of purification so we said we are going to launch it and when i launch it i'll have to get registered i had a nice debate with uh, one of the professors of technology management of sumati siddharth and also thanks to my vice chancellor who gave me the permission that you should register this product and we should own it it should be the dit product it was not given see i was very crafty i'm repeating technology was developed by me it is going to be transferred to someone but before transferring it dat is owning the property i own pavitra pati the logo the name got registered and it was floated across india for manufacturers after this we got about you know and we are so nice we are a technical university of ministry of defense working for government of india so we said no the technology should be given it for free you cannot you know ask them to buy your technology luckily you know this process uh, we agreed that the technology will be transferred for free immediately eight companies had come and nda was also signed so transfer of technology and nda this transfer of technology and this tot is different than my previous tot and my previous nda so i think that's the difference we have to we made those differences with the support from again er ipr division of uh, drdo and drdo has got uh, one one group called uh, industrial interface department and that department had helped us in guiding to phrase the clause and you uh, know in in our in our refined uh, tot and nda documents so that was signed and the packaging again packaging also we wanted we said that we will own it so the design part as you could see the features the instructions all these things were made by us us matlab diit It's DIT. Now this is the product. The product has got about eight different designs. So we made a quick market search about with hundred masks. From hundred masks, we found that this is the most powerful design. Everyone likes this type of design. That Warley painting. Warley painting was given to me by one of my students, girl students from Rajasthan. She said, "Sir, why not we do some? And you know, we are going to launch a lot of." Uh, designs now but this is one of the most popular and uh, i think uh, the company who had taken the technology is a kolapur based fabric manufacturer company big time guys i was very blessed that this company uh, see ultimately when you transfer the technology i did the assessment of the technology also i went to the manufacturer believe me i drove to kolapur during one of the weekends i saw the company i saw the profile of the company can they take this technology but the most impressive part was the directors of these companies were highly technical for their age they are in the age of 40 to 45 too much of technical so they said no i'll have to take you to my institute so that you'll have to introduce to my vice chancellor and they agreed we came we met our vice chancellor we felt the confidence See the conference level was marked, and compared, see eight technologies, see, eight companies had signed the TOT, but this is the only company we said, I'm going to give the knowledge, I'm going to give all my 
technical data and details. Everything was transferred and the product had come out successfully. Why I say successfully? Successfully for a teacher is, this is definitely a success for a simple teacher. Again, I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't have my own industry, but whatever we did with Kaudang and whatever we did at the initial stage in 2012 had come out in 2019 because the objective was having a defined market, defined market. The challenge had created an opportunity. We didn't stop here. What we did, product number two. See, in my previous product, it was like super hydrophobic property. I want to compete with the existing PPE kits, which is available in the market. You can see the PPE kits ranging from 200 rupees to 4,000 rupees. The one which has got 200 rupees, again, it's a polypropylene mat. It's like wrapping the polyethylene bag around you. It's like a dead body. I'm sorry. There is no breathing property. There is no porosity. I thank and, uh, you know, we'll have to bless all these doctors who are working on such kind of uh, fabric materials. There is no breathing characteristics. They have some basic certification called bacterial filtering efficacy. Full stop. They don't have any other standards done. But what I did, we launched this product called Aushada Tara. Again, Sanskrit word, Aushada, medicine, Tara. You know that. So, DIT registered product number two called Aushada Tara Body Suit. After registration, we invited uh, across for the manufacturers. Six companies had come to us and NDA was also signed. Again, only one company was found to be very successful. We developed our Aushada Tara PPE kit, which you could see in that photograph. It's a membrane material, whatever fabric material you have, the fabric material will be a part of our polyurethane specially designed polymer membrane. And that one, uh, Vice Chancellor and the directors of the company, they are holding. I'm the person who is standing with my, uh, with my that uh, purple violety color, uh, the, uh, this uh, mask. Okay. But the other three guys are the directors and my Vice Chancellor. So if you could see, on the same day, we were very successful. 13th of August, we launched the company was not uh, waiting. No, they don't want to wait for uh, August 15. They said, no, no, no. Dear participant, just hold a minute. There is a connection loss and uh, we are recovering soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nilesh. So, sorry. So if you see, they don't want to wait. They said, no, we'll launch on the 13th of uh, August. They launched it. Both Aushat Tara as well as the, the mask. So the Aushat Tara, the characteristic is if you see that it will be a part of, it will be synthetic. It's not 100% uh, natural. The mask is 100% natural, biodegradable, but the uh, the PPE kit, it is not 100% biodegradable, but it has got some very good breathing characteristics. It has got all the porosities. It has got the herbal extracts. It has got the antimicrobial properties. It has got the virus filtering efficacy. So all these things were there and for one one good thing is one good thing is all these PPE kits whatever we are using it has to undergo one test called splash resistance test let me explain what is splash resistance test for example if doctors are doing some surgery or if your doctors are having some these suits at 120 millimeter of mercury pressure they pour the blood on the suit and the suit should not be stained.
not audible uh, presentation has not shown Thank you. So it, it should undergo this test called splash resistance test. Splash resistance test is 120 millimeter mercury of blood. Okay, mimic the blood will be splashed on the fabric and it should not stain the fabric. So that's the test and we got approved from Citra, South Indian Textile Research Association. They give the certification. We got that done. Once we got that done, we had the confidence that yes, this fabric can go for PPE suit and it has it can go up to 25 washing cycles means there is no biohazard on this system. This can be reused. We can we can put that in the washing industrial washing cycle with mild detergent and I would I would not suggest uh, hot water, but simple water we can we can just wash it and we can reuse it. So that's that's the product we have and we registered again as I said we registered this product so again this Aushat Tara AT uh, the arrow marks arrow marks uh, I don't know it we made in the last minute and uh, you'll have to excuse me if the logo is not impressive but what what we are trying to say is you know in all the directions I'm available so that's what I'm trying to say so we, we created in the lab and we got it registered and now it is a registered product so these two are the very important registered products of DIIT Pavitra Pati Aushada Tara. Now, the company, as I was saying, they, they showed the vigor of taking it international as well. We got lots and lots of inquiries from Singapore, Malaysia, and Europe for this Pavitra Pati mask because this degradation bird, biodegradation, is going to be a very important bird for all these PPE kits because all the existing PPE kits are going to create biohazards as well. We cannot just like that pin it, we will have to incinerate it. But in our case with mild detergent you can rinse it and reuse it and if you don't like the design, if you find the fading of, fading of the system, throw it and it can be nicely digested and eaten by the 30 million or 30 crore, 300 crore bacteria of our cow dung. You know, it can be cow dung bacteria love this. So now we applied for a certification of compliances. So this company had uh, registered for the certificate of compliances so that we can establish the UK, European, international market. See here, what we realized is, again, uh, time and your luck. <laughs> See, for both the products, we sent the samples and they, whatever claims we made, they picked up the test. Luckily, we are very good in those tests. So they picked up those kind of tests and it hit. So immediately, you know, you will not believe we, we got the certification in one week. It's not that simple to get the CE certification of compliance. So we got that in one week because the company worked very hard. This was done not by me. It was for the company. The company guys, they applied and they, they got this and they sent the samples for some random quick testing and it passed and we got the certification. So now both are getting this certified. Now DIT. To start with, uh, started a research on antibacterial fabric material. Then uh, during the COVID time, made some products out of it. And now from that fundamental research or the basic research, the products are taken to a next level, which is Pavitrapati, the biodegradable mask, and Aushada Tara, the layer in your, one of the layers in your PPE kit. Okay. Now I'm not going to name the company uh, that company is going to, that's what I heard from the director. He is going to launch uh, this Aushat Tara next week, hopefully 
from the hands of our Maharashtra Chief Minister. Next, next slide. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So now, if you see uh, from basic research, my second or the third slide was saying I filed the patent, the idea. Okay. And the, I, the patent got granted in 2016. And now they have asked for some clarifications on the patent, which is straightforward, very simple. But if you see, we had cultivated, no, it took some time, right? But we used the right platform. So we, 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 we followed some steps. So the steps what we followed is invention disclosure. Okay. When I want to transfer this technology to the company who is going to make the three ply mask and the Aushatara fabric material, we were able to disclose. I was very honest in my disclosure. I'm repeating, I was very honest in my disclosure. Honest. Sometimes it doesn't happen. If the teacher is greedy, I'm not going to say beyond this. Okay. But the teacher was honest. Invention disclosure. You'll have to give everything what you had done to them honestly. And patent disclosure is different. Let me tell you. In the patent, if you look, there are, you know, minimum two to 200 claims in any patents. Okay. And if you read those claims of the patents, it will be boomeranging you everywhere in all the directions. The concentration taken of the herbal extract will range from one milligram to thousand milligram per liter. Katam. You cannot do experiments there. And the electro spinning was done in the condition of 44 degrees centigrade at a relative humidity of 75 percentage. If I give such a claim in the patent, I think the manufacturer, the simple manufacturers will never bother to take the technology. So patent disclosure is different from invention disclosure. Invention disclosure, you will have to give all log books, sir. You will have to give the log book to them, the good and the bad. What were the challenges you faced? Everything will go. Then we license the technology. Yes, this is again on paper. Licensing of technology. Again, this is a paperwork. Marketing and commercialization. You know, these two things, teachers are very bad, but still the company said we will take care of it. So the first three parts were very, very important for us with respect to invention disclosure. So these were the steps which the teacher of DAAT followed invention disclosure very honestly and patent disclosure very honestly. So the basic research, whatever patent ideas we had in the patent got cultivated. During this journey, there were some drawbacks. It cannot be always rosy. Even rose has got thorns. So it was, you know, what happens? Uh, please recollect. Initially, I said partnering is really good. That partnering is different than this partnering, at least in India. That partnering was. The consortium was made where I will have to identify the domain experts. Domain experts, nanofiber spinning capability expert on earth, fabric manufacturer on earth, best herbal extract supplier on earth. So you see, you'll have to have a different pool. During the initial research, I'll have to have the best pools and that's a different pool than this pool. This pool, when I transfer this technology, I was really finding difficult to make my directors understand my technology. Believe me, thanks to Google not uh, and, and Skype actually, yes, we were able to continuously chat live with Google as well as Skype. And I was continuously packed for seven days, be very honest, because they were taking the productions. When they are taking the productions of, because my fabric initial applied research was very simple. It was matlab, simple, matlab, not as tedious like this. Now the requirements are stringent for the mass. So I'll have to be very careful for my manufacturing. Right. So during this process, I was lack, lacking the pool of engineers, scientists, researchers. I could not find the best antiviral expert in India. 
i could not find the best you know antibacterial doctor in india because a pathologist is saying something and histology is saying something and the biochemist is saying something so i could not and doctors are doctors you know like uh, i think the this this talk maybe you know i can do it later it was not that simple for me really to be very 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 honest but again by grace of god i had one international collaborator my previous collaborator discussed something he has got a special software where computationally i can understand the interaction parameter of virus with my herbal extract computationally i can say that this compound in my herbal extract is killing those virus i have the data it was a 28 page document not easy not easy to get that document but he was my well wisher so with the collaboration i was able to venture on and i have those data that was very very important for this uh, drawback but that is not available for everyone that's what i'm trying to say market size was very small right see it's not <laughs> it's not a big market for me a mask see some i think uh, i won't mind saying this few of my faculty members and staffs were also saying that bala sir is known to develop ablative composites for reentry vehicle abhi wo mask bej raha he is you know making <laughs> making masks so you know i i i and also the market size you know is very small but you know uh, i i was not upset because ultimately it's the technology which is going in which i was very much appreciating then inability to make investment in research yes but in my case i was very lucky my vice chancellor again i said sir i have to do some process optimization do some testing do some validation immediately he sanctioned me budget on a fast track basis so that was like a really blessing for me and i recruited one uh, during the corona period covid period i was successful in recruiting one jrf also who is continuously sitting in the lab and he is working you know i i got that support but inability to make investment like people should believe whatever you say they should do some investment they should believe but during the transfer of technology and the process optimization in the scaled up process my company was very happy not my company sorry the the company who took the technology siddeshwar tech textiles in kolhapur they were very happy to do the investment for testings you know all these testings costed them fortune none of these testings i did huh? the mask testing was not done by me except the virus neutralizing others were all done by the company and also the retainment of innovation correct at one stage what happened they were asking me too many questions i was not able to restrict my knowledge i should give them that's why i'm saying no i should honestly if you look into the previous slide invention disclosure should be very honest i said that five times why because to be very honest i was not very honest i was uh, i was reluctant in giving some informations to the company but what happened while well, product optimization uh, they had some drawbacks you know sir this particular herbal product is not giving me the spinning capability for scaling up with this solvent so please help us so at that time you know i had to really i opened up so i was not very very possessive about my innovation i opened up i oozed out i said i'm going to be a seva maker today so i told everything and it it it, uh, it was it was very helpful for the company and uh, access to the international markets yes i was lucky i was able to get the certification and uh, out of 28 uh, different testings they picked up the test which you know i was very confident that you know it doesn't happen to everyone so only on this certification you can have the access to the international market now this company is going to send samples to spain ireland and they have already sent sample to malaysia and singapore for very very big big companies offspring it's a very big company they make herbal baby products so already the samples have reached and i don't know so next level is going to happen so you know these these are all you know the drawbacks i i i i i'm bringing light to my project though it's a drawback slide but these are all the typical drawbacks for a faculty i'm telling you very honestly i am a faculty but i am a faculty with some industrial backup so i was able to get the things done with my access some here and there otherwise these are all the real drawbacks it's not that simple so ultimately i'm 
sorry i bored you but i'm coming to the nice slide of conclusions so if you look there was a nice clarity of project objective we had a clarity of project objective you know few of the audiences would have felt anti packel fabric ke kya hai yaar it is available you know kya hota hai so but we were it was 2012 2013 we took it very seriously so the clarity of the project objective was taken very seriously though it was very simple thorough state of the art search state of the art search doesn't mean that you have to do only the technical literature search we had done a fantastic market search also i'm telling you only after doing that thorough market search and feasibility search alok industry the big companies in silvasa big big textile companies were willing to sign mou with us because when they sign mou they should feel confidence and faith in the faculty and the scientists it's not that they will immediately you know but they were having that faith uh, whatever he is saying maybe is right so you know we were able to have a thorough understanding of the state of the art then this uh, ip again thanks to my previous uh, vice chancellors and the er ipr team and also the drdo for helping me to file the patent to file a patent really takes lots and lots of your energy time but idea was getting patented and i got the provisional number once i got the provisional number of my idea immediately we started doing that applied research we started i started giving all my ideas to the students it was like a small factory in the lab they were continuously working generating lots and lots and lots of data then the proposals as i was saying initial consortium model yes i took all the experts on that domain means anti bacterial domain expert i have identified from israel super hydrophobic domain expert i had identified from canada then uh, this bekin university australia was a fiber expert so we had good experts and also we had the company so we all partnered together as a nice consortium and identification yes it really worked in our proposal we we took some time to identify but it worked very nicely you know the photograph is like that is one of the fruit which we got out of that project you know we are signing that dot nda with the company who are going to supply this uh, mask who are the manufacturers of this mask and who are the manufacturers of this pp suit and these are the various references which i have taken and uh, thank you very much jai hind and i think no in this uh, corona yeah though we are physically at home at our own places it's a fantastic uh, test for our tolerance patience and all the negative energies will try to dominate i uh, know no let us try to stay very positive all for good let us stay very safe and stay healthy thank you very much so i'm uh, i'll just uh, read out few questions which has come in the chat box sir uh, for you to answer okay okay uh, now uh, the first question is by mrs spin uh, mrs spin the i think uh, what hmm? what was the process of registration of your product okay i think you have explained it but then you can elaborate more the the process of registration uh, what we have to do is uh, from as a faculty we gave the name we gave the the logo then we had given the patent which we had filed and got granted and we had made all the claims of the product what it can do and as a product it was we recruited one chartered accountant for us and he had taken all these details he had filed those details after filing the details he had some clarification regarding the technicality of my claims and we had shown him some of our data based on that he got that name registered it took it took almost uh, for pavitrapati 
I got it done within one week. And Aushadha Tara, I got it done for about 14 days because that Aushadha is not an easy word. A lot of people had been using those words. But luckily, I don't know, in that debate, I was not involved. Uh, whatever budget I got during the COVID time, we had a recruit, we recruited through our finance office one chartered accountant. We gave all those details and uh, he had made the process. And in fact, this direction was given to me by the supplier on the manufacturer of the mask. He said it's good to register from DIAT and why not you do from your side so that you can own the product. And in our TOT, beyond some size of sales, the royalty are to be paid to DIAT. So that's the model we had got. Hope it answers the question. Yes, sir. Uh, so the second question is uh, Mr. Suryanarayan. He's asking, what is the life of the professional file uh, file number of the idea? I think he's asking wow. about what the sir. Very good question. <laughs> In India, uh, once you file the provisional patent, and if you have a good attorney with you, provisional patent number can be got maximum in one month provided your idea is unique and from provisional they give a nice buffer time for the filing of the full patent and in that time as i was saying i had lots and lots of students we generated lots and lots of data and those data were filed as a full file patent after full filing, the examination took about four years and roughly by six to seven years, we got the patent filed number and it's Indian patent. It's Indian patent. Uh, with my previous employer, I had filed one European patent. We got the patent in uh, one and a half years. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so the next question is uh, again from Mr. Surana. Any patent would last for 20 years. So, what is the next procedure to retain the product in the market? Uh, again, uh, you don't need to file a patent to see them in the market. Okay. Uh, as long as you register. Because uh, my third product is going to get launched very shortly. Uh, that is going to be the dispenser system for neutralizing the virus in the rooms. Uh, we got very good results. I don't have a patent on that, but I have already registered in the name of DIT. So to take it to the market, for that you don't need to finally you know wait for the examine the patent but whatever claim you make in the packaging if some inquiries are made you'll have to address it i think that's that's how it works i think uh, small companies you know now the commodity uh, masks which are sold in india now i think they don't have a patent and uh, sorry i missed that yesterday my product sorry 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 my is a very bad word our product uh, is launched and it's available in Amazon also. It comes in a beautiful packaging. When we were able to load in Amazon market, we had signed four pages. And those pages were not easy pages. To take anything to the market, I think uh, Amazon were uh, very critical. And just because we had the certifications and uh, all these things, I think it was easy to go ahead. And patent, to answer the question, I think patent need not be always uh, filed and examined to launch any project. Project, not project, uh, product, sorry. Okay, so uh, the next question is by uh, Captain Hiramat, sir. He's basically asking us uh, the possibility of fabric usage in 
intensity jobs of armed forces. Uh, so, what is the maximum life of the fabric, sir? About your fabric, is this talking about? The, the the fabric material on the phase one and phase two till applied research, it can withstand ten washing cycles with antibacterial and super hydrophobic properties. The one which we have done now for Aushadatara and uh, Pavitrapati. Pavitrapati hydrophobicity is not very important. It is a virus neutralizing property. Till 10 simple washing, it can withstand the virus neutralizing property. And that Aushadatara bodysuit can withstand 25 washing cycles industrial scale and one sample had been already sent to IDS headquarters. It has already gone as Aushatara to IDS headquarters through our uh, Commodore Sina registrar. Uh, the last question sir which is in the chat box sir this is something to do with your research sir. So basically yeah. uh, the question is put forward by group captain Deepesh Shahji sir. He is basically uh, asking the query regarding what uh, Regarding what about the mummies, the Egyptian mummies clothes, which were used to protect royal family bodies after the, their demises. Did, huh? did the, uh, those clothes have wear antibacterial, antifungal, breathable? What technology they had used in those ancient eras to protect the dead bodies for thousands of years? Basically, yes. something about your research. Very good question. See, in the state of the heart search, we found those details also. Good question. See, uh, the fabric material which went for such kind of applications had nano silver, nano gold, and natural extracts. Nano gold and nano silver. You don't need to go to Egyptian civilization, even in Mesopotamian and uh, Indus Valley civilization. People had asked us to drink water from either utensils of copper or silver, or if you are a son of Akbar, gold. What is the reason is water with a little bit of citric acid gives out some ions of silver ion, copper ion and gold ions. These are found to have antibacterial, antimicrobial, to some extent in the PPB level, parts per billion level. They are anti-cancerous. I have a very interesting paper where I had worked on nano silver showing anti-aging property. So I think uh, this question is good. But in our case, we had completely exposed our system with herbal extracts only, which are liked by the microorganisms of the nature. And uh, this, this is one of the domains of my research. In fact, I work on uh, uh, high temperature paints, then I work on uh, re-entry vehicle composite vehicle systems. Uh, one of the colonel, he had graduated on uh, uh, this thermal barrier coatings for tanks inside. Yeah, he is a colonel, he graduated with PhD. I had a group captain who worked on uh, self-healing uh, fiber membranes for uh, composite materials. So my domain, if you see, you know, uh, my vertical is non-metallics, but I had used the non-metallics, which can biomimic, non-metallics, which can biomimic. My recent project is artificial photosynthesis. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to mimic. That's what my research domain is. Hope it answered the question. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, I would request a forum. If there are any questions, they can unmute them. I can ask.
Hello, this is Pramila. Can I ask, sir? Ah, please, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to know. I searched in the net uh, while listening to your uh, talk. Um, it yeah. was around August twentieth. Uh, around this product has come into existence. I think the studies. Right. Uh, then, uh, uh, my doubt is, has it come into market? Yeah. It's, I don't know. Uh, open, open it parallelly. Amazon me biodegradable mask. Ours is the only product in Amazon. Okay, okay, sir. In Amazon it has come. Yesterday it has come. Okay, okay. Yesterday only. Yeah, and it's Flipkart. Flipkart will be coming next week. Okay, sir. Can I know Dmart, the quantity? Dmart had signed a contract for twenty-five thousand masks. Okay, okay, sir. What would be the cost, sir? Uh, it's a very tricky question. <laughs> uh, I can be partially honest. Is it okay? <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. Uh, per piece, roughly about ninety to one hundred ten rupees. Sir, pardon? Ninety to one hundred ten rupees. Oh. But in Amazon, I you see. see for two hundred per piece. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. May I interrupt, sir? Amazon is showing six twenty-five rupees per four pieces. Yes. And there is what? There are two grades: six twenty-five and eight hundred. I'm very happy that you know people are following me. <laughs> the, the six the six twenty-five has got a catch. Any questions? Doctor Nilesh, you can uh, take over, sir, for summing up. So is there any question? Is there any question from you, sir? I don't think so, sir. You can sum up the session, sir. Ah, yeah, sir. Nile, sir. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. He's saying you take over. Hello. Can I ask one question, sir? Yeah, please, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, sir. Sir, just I want to ask you. Uh, this mask, as you say, that biodegradable mask. How many times we can use it? Yeah. Uh, the instructions of washing is given. Till five washing cycles, you can retain the aroma. And for twenty washing cycles, you can retain the ingredient which. Neutralizes the virus and bacteria, so you should not say, "Hey, four times wash, after that, the masala is finished." No, no, no. It is not the masala. Masala is the aroma, but there are six different constituents which I have used, which are a part of your fabric material. Till twenty times you can use, but washing doesn't mean like a dobi washing, simple, mild, polite washing or rinsing. I would say. Sir, thank you. Only just I want one one more answer from you. How you compare uh, this mask with N95 mask? Uh, okay, N95 mask is synthetic, polypropylene, non-woven mat, multi-layer, breathability is there. That's what they claim. Have you tried? If you try, you will understand. But this mask, it's a face fit. i'm not able to uh, i can show you it's a face fit okay you could see it covers and even the nasal part can go up and i'm putting my glasses on it 